Welcome to another video. If you know Calculus 2, at the end of it, you know you're going to know about the Taylor series and you'll be able to write sine as a Taylor series. There's an infinite series of almost every function that we know. So, this limit is easy to take as x goes to zero because you can just subtract the function of sine from x, like this. Look, sine x can be written as x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial minus, you just keep going. So if I need to subtract sine x from x, it's just x minus this, and what will be my answer? My answer is going to be this minus this is 0. This minus this gives me x cubed over 3 factorial is 6, and this becomes minus x to the fifth over 5 factorial, which is going to be uh, 120. Okay, plus, so I have just performed the operation of the top. Now, if I need to divide by x cubed, if I divide this by x cubed, I'm going to divide this by x cubed, divide this by x cubed, what do I get? So I'm just doing it so you see what, what happens. This is 1 over 6. If I divide this by x cubed, it's x squared over 120. Whatever I divide, there's going to be another x raised to power something on top. It's going to be x to the fourth over 7 factorial, okay? So I have performed all of these operations. And I want to take the limit as x goes to 0. Well, this is going to become 0. This becomes 0. So the only thing left is 1 over 6. So the typical way of evaluating this limit is to use Taylor series. You can also evaluate this limit using L'Hopital's rule because this is 0 minus 0 over 0. So it's 0 over 0. If you differentiate and differentiate again, and maybe differentiate a third time, you may have to differentiate three times to be able to use L'Hopital's rule for this problem. But what if you're in Calculus 1? How would you solve this? Because you can't do this, you don't even know this yet. And you don't even know L'Hopital's rule, or you know it, but you're not allowed to use it for problems. And squeeze theorem doesn't help in this case either. So, someone posted this problem in, in one of, on, as a comment in one of the videos, and when I went to look at the comments, my good friend had already written the solution or how to solve it using just algebra and trig. It's beautiful. And that's what I want to show you in this video. Let's get into it. The first thing we're going to do is assume the limit exists. Because if the limit doesn't exist, many of the things we're going to do will be illegal. But we're going to assume the limit exists, exists, although I know it exists, and I've shown you that it exists. It's 1 over 6. How do we get 1 over 6 using just algebra and trig? Well, let's say this is L. That's the limit. We don't know what the value of L is, but we should get 1 over 6 at the end. But let's just do our manipulation right now. The first thing we're going to do is to replace x with 2t. It's beautiful. Okay, so we have, we're going to say that let x be equal to 2t. If x is equal to 2t, it means as x goes to 0, what do you think is going to happen to t? t also goes to 0, because t is half of x. So as x goes to 0, t goes to 0. So we can say that this limit that we want to compute, we're going to write L on the side, is equal to the limit. Instead of now using x, we start using t. As t goes to 0 of... What do we have? The limit as t goes to 0 of, instead of x, we have 2t minus sine 2t over, x is now 2t all cubed. Let's clean this up. This is going to be the limit as t goes to 0 of, 
2t minus, well, as a Calc 1 student, you know what sine 2t is. It is the double angle formula, 2 sine t cosine t. Wow, and this is going to be 8t cubed. Anytime I see cosine t showing up as t goes to zero, I get excited because cosine knows how to absorb a lot of zeros. So, see what we've got. We've got the limit as t goes to zero of this. Okay, so how does this help me? Well, I can see two here. I see two here. I can cancel the twos on top and one two here. So if I factor out two on the top, I can reduce this to some simpler expression. We can say this is the limit as t goes to zero of, if I cancel out twos, I'm going to have on top t minus sine t cosine t divided by 4 t cubed. Okay, see this 4 is a constant. I can pull 1 over 4 to the back. Let's do it. Let's save time. So I'm going to pull 1 over 4 to the back here. Oh, I might just use this 4 to multiply the L. See this? My L is still here. If I multiply both sides by 4, I'm going to end up with just 4L on this side, which makes my life a lot easier, okay? So that if I have 4L on the left-hand side, what I have on the right is just the limit as t goes to 0 of, look at this expression, t minus sine t, cos t over t cubed, it doesn't look like it's helping me. So see what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring in an extra sine t and take that same sine t away. So you add sine t, you subtract sine t. So I'm going to change the top now to t minus sine t plus sine t. As you can see, t minus sine t plus sine t is just zero. It's just t minus zero. It doesn't change anything. But now I still have my minus sine t cosine t divided by t cubed. Now it's beginning to look juicy, really juicy. Now let's do some factoring. This is now going to be the limit as t goes to zero of t minus sine t, this is one, plus I have sine t into one uh, minus cosine t. Do you see that? I'm going to, instead of dividing everything by t cubed, I'm going to split in the middle and make this t cubed and make this also t cubed. And this limit belongs to everybody. Now I'm going to apply the limit law. The limit of a sum is the sum of the limit as long as each of the limits exists. So remember we assumed that some limit exists can you begin to see that limit? This is what we started with. You see it? So if I take the limit of the first part plus the limit of the second part, let's do it. This is equal to the limit as t goes to zero of t minus sine t over t cubed. Oh, it's beginning to look like what we started with. Do you see that? Ah, okay, plus, what do we have? We're gonna have the limit also, as t goes to zero, of sine t times, um, you know what, let me put this t cubed here. And here I'm gonna have one minus cosine t. Mm. This is that original limit we started with, which is our L. So this is the same thing as L. Plus the limit as t goes to zero of, this is going to be sine t over t cubed. I need to modify this guy so that it gives me what I want. So I'm going to do the calculation here because we don't have a lot of space left. And then I'm going to put the answer on this side. Now watch what's going to happen. 1 minus cosine t 
let's do what we call rationalization. I'm going to rationalize this by multiplying it by 1, so 1 plus cosine t divided by 1 plus cosine t. See, I haven't changed anything because this is 1. But if I multiply this way, what do I get? 1 minus cosine t times 1 plus cosine t is going to give me 1 minus cosine squared t over 1 plus cosine t. But what is 1 minus cosine squared t? It is sine squared t. <laughs> okay, so it's going to be sine squared t over 1 plus cosine t. That's all I was looking for. Now that I have what I'm looking for, in fact, this L, I'm taking it away, okay? So, if I subtract L from this side, if I move this L here, I'm going to have 3L here. And what I have on the right is going to be the limit as t goes to 0. Let's get rid of this. So, we're going to have the limit as t goes to 0 of, what do we have now? We have sine cubed t over t cubed. So, we have sine cubed t over t cubed. I'm going to write it as sine t over t, everything cubed. Multiplied by 1 over 1 plus cosine t. But you know that the limit of this as t goes to 0 is going to be 1. So this is basically equal to 1 times, because if I use the product law for limit, I'm going to take this limit and I'm going to take this limit also. Maybe I should split the limit now, okay? Let me just rewrite it. So this is going to be equal to um, the limit as t goes to 0 of sine t over t. Um, this is now cubed. Because the limit of a function is the function of the limit, as long as the limit exists. You see how much manipulation is here? Okay, um, times the limit as t goes to 0 of 1 over 1 plus cosine t. So, what do we have? We have 3L is equal to, this is now 1 cubed times, as t goes to 0, this becomes 1. 1 plus 1, it's just 1 over 2. So, what we have is 3L is equal to 1 half, which implies that L equals 1 half divided by 3, which is 1 over 6. That is beautiful. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.